Hello everyone, good morning to you all. Welcome to the stream. Chugin, Alpha, Mike, Sven, Patrick, and Not Kiroda. Welcome guys. Thank you all for being here today. We are going to be doing some stuff in Dunmorrow. And eventually here, hopefully around level 10, we're going to head over to Teldrassil. And we're going to do stuff, stuff over in the Night Elf lands today. All in an effort to do all of the starting zones. So that we can stay as far ahead of the leveling curve as possible. Let's go ahead and we'll pick up all the quests here. Jacob, good morning. Welcome to the stream, buddy. Can I help you? You have a great day now. Droids, good morning to you. Welcome to the stream. What can I do for you? Here they are. Off with you. How are you? Be good. Off with you. How are you? See you soon. Mike, that sounds awesome, man. I, I've never done 40 men Molten Core. Never done it. And I don't think I would do it on Hardcore. If I did Molten Core on Hardcore, I would basically expect to die. Kind of hoping that in the Season of Discovery we get like a 10 man Molten Core. I would definitely be down for a 10 man Molten Core. That would be fun. Uh, I think there's ore over here, but we have a lot of wolves right nearby. No one died? That's amazing. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping. I did level up fishing a little bit, so we have fishing now. That is at 45 out of 75. I also used that to work on a little bit of cooking. And so cooking is at 36. I do have the recipe for long jaw mud snappers, but we have to hit 50 cooking before we can learn that one. Jess, good morning. Welcome to the stream. I also trained level 8. Uh, the most important thing we learned at level 8 was Hammer of Justice, so we now have an interrupt. And yeah, it's pretty awesome to have an interrupt at such an early level. Thank <laughs> you. 
Alpha T, that's really exciting, man. Yeah, I got my new rig like a year or so ago. And I got it through iBuyPower. And that was a really good experience. It's always exciting when you're either getting or building a new PC. Uh, do I really want to do this one right now? Yeah, I think it's okay if we do. Maybe I'll try to stay on the outside of the cave. I'm drawn back to the paladin like a moth to the flame. Yeah, basically. To be fair, like, our last paladin died by falling off a boat in the middle of the ocean, so I don't really feel like I gave the last paladin a fair shake. Because we died in such an inane manner. So, maybe this time if we die, we'll die, like, actually in combat fighting stuff. Would be ideal. Not just drowning in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, Mike, that's awesome. I'm glad you had a good experience with them. Yep, I didn't have any problems then. I, the rig's been running great ever since. Good morning, good afternoon, welcome to the stream, thanks for stopping by. I think next time we're in town, I need to buy a little bit of food. I should have saved a little bit of the fish that I cooked. Well, that would have been a smart idea. Uh, either that, or we need to start getting linen pretty soon so I can make bandages. Yeah, that's about as far as I go into the cave. I, f I feel like if I pull any of these, I'm going to pull a second one, and I really don't want to do that. So let's head back to the surface. 
where things are a little bit safer. Karen, Richard, good evening. Welcome to the stream. Everything is going okay here. We had more snow this morning. So, that was fun. Luckily, it seems to be getting a little bit warmer outside. And by warmer, I mean it's 20 degrees Fahrenheit now. Which doesn't sound like much, but when it's been in the single digits for highs for the last couple days, like 20 degrees in the morning is actually quite warm. I have a new perspective on what is an acceptable morning temperature after like the deep freeze we've had. There we go. There's our second guy. It was bound to happen eventually. We should be fine. I would take a good heat wave right about now. Yeah, we're gonna get a heat wave next week. It's called being in the mid 30s. That's gonna be our heat wave. It's it's gonna get close to 40, and that's probably gonna feel quite warm compared to what we've had to get used to. Well, that's all the Wendigo mains we need. This guy's running right at us. Also, next time we're in town, I need to do a little bit of smelting. That would be a good idea. Johnny, good morning, man. Welcome to the stream. Marlena, good morning to you as well. Welcome, guys. Johnny, you guys knocked out BFD in under an hour last night. Zero deaths. That's awesome. Yeah, you guys really have that on farm now. What was that? Was that the Wednesday night raid, I guess? Well, that's really cool. Ground. 
be good. I saw a node pop up behind me too. I'm going to have to circle back for that one. I need all the copper I can get now and forever. Mr. Santa 78, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I saw it pop up back here somewhere. Maybe another player swooped it and grabbed it. Huh. I haven't seen that many players today. Oh, yeah, well, maybe. Yeah, there's got to be a couple of people over here. Oh, wait, there it is. Let's see if we can get in there and grab it. Yeah, Karen, I feel you there. Yeah, this year we didn't even have an autumn here, so we went right from running the AC to running the heat. We didn't get a break in between, really. We got like a couple days where we could open the windows. And then it got cold really, really fast. It's like too hot and then immediately too cold. Kind of hoping that during the spring we'll actually have a period of time where we can turn off the heat and not have to run the AC. That would be really swell.
Great to meet you. Safe travels. Talk to me. Watch your back. How are you? Keep your feet on the ground. Ah, uh, now I have to decide if I want to do the frost main hold right now. Or if I just want to work on the lower level stuff. Probably be smarter just to work on the low level stuff. Let's make our way back to Karanos, and on the way we'll get the rest of the boar meat that we need. And we'll turn in Bitter Rivals, which has a follow-up that comes back out here, I'm pretty sure. So, Mr. Santa, the way it works right now is your options for playing Classic. You can play Classic Era Hardcore, which is what we're doing, which is a, a specific server that follows the hardcore rules. Uh, you can play Classic Era just like regular old Classic Era. You can play Wrath of the Lich King Classic. Or you can play Classic Era Season of Discovery. You, you can't play Burning Crusade. There is no Burning Crusade server. But if you were to level, you know, in, in Wrath of the Lich King, you're going to level through the 1 to 60 content, then you're going to level through Outland, then you're going to level through Northrend. So if you want to see, you know, the vanilla 1 to 60 and Outland and Northrend, then you want to play Wrath of the Lich King Classic. If you play Season of Discovery, well, that, that works a lot differently, and the level cap is ultimately going to be level 60. And same thing with Classic Era, the level cap is 60. And then if you're playing, if you if you choose to play Wrath of the Lich King, keep in mind that sometime this summer, that's going to move on to Cataclysm Era. So if you start playing Wrath, that's eventually, that's going to progress into Cataclysm sometime in the summer. Yeah, Johnny, if you think people were sad when they didn't leave a BC server around, just wait until they don't leave a Wrath server and everything moves into Cataclysm. There are going to be some upset people. I prophesize that much. And then if they do choose to keep a Wrath server, there are going to be people that are really upset because they don't have a BC server. So then there would be like outcry. Why a Wrath server, but no Burning Crusade server? So they're kind of damned if they do, damned if they don't, you know? Unless they go the extra mile and like they spin up a Burning Crusade server, but what are the odds of them doing that? That's probably like nowhere on their radar. Yeah, I could see being upset in both situations. Like, you don't have a Wrath server, that's upsetting. You get a Wrath server, but then you recall that you were never given a Burning Crusade server. So, it's like, yeah, they, they really can't win. They could win, they'd have to open up a TBC server. And then they'd have to leave a, at least one server in Wrath era, that could be a big win. You'd think it would be an easy win. The problem is, then there are so many different ways to uh, play the game. 
kind of like Mr. Santa situation where he like he doesn't even know like how it's going to work. Like how do I select what version to play? What decides? Do I decide? Does it decide? There are already so many different versions of WoW Classic to play. That uh, like adding like keeping a yeah, imagine if you could play classic era, classic era hardcore, classic era seasonal, burning crusade, wrath of the lich king, cataclysm. That's six versions of classic. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like for me, like I understand how it all works. So like it's there's never enough classic. Like that'd be awesome if we had all those choices. But for most people. And especially for like people who've been away from the game for a long time or people coming back to the game or coming fresh It's confusing. It would be so confusing To have to sit there and tell somebody yes, you can play classic and in fact you have to pick from one of six different Ways to play classic So I can I can kind of see how they don't want to do it. I Still think they should but I can see how they it's really easy to justify not doing it on the grounds that it makes like the game so much more convoluted I'm surprised we got up here to find this. This is, uh, well, firstly, it's a great view. Secondly, it seems like a decent place to fall off and die. So that that's crossed my mind. There we go. Likely a thumbnail. Maybe they could do them in rotating seasons. What they should do is they should do what's called a progression server that resets every time. And a progression server is where, you know, you open in vanilla, you have 1 to 60 content for 3 months, and then 60 to 70 opens up. You have 60 to 70 for 3 months, and then 70 to 80 opens up. You have that for 3 months, and then 80 to 85 opens up. And then 3 months later, you reset. And yeah, they should just do progression servers. Uh, EverQuest does it. When EverQuest does like a fresh start, they, they have progression servers that will over time open up all of the expansions. And I think if they just had one one progression server per region that just continues to rotate. And it could be three months, it could be longer. I think three months is a good time. Especially when you're working through like four like batches of content, like four expansions. Because that rounds off really nicely to a year. Maybe they'd have to speed up leveling a little bit. You know what I mean? I wouldn't want them to boost it, like, too much. I, I think the 40% leveling speed that we got in Season of Mastery was actually pretty good. You didn't out-level content. Like, there was still no way you were ever going to out-level content. You still had to zone hop. Because if you just didn't zone hop, the 40% extra XP was not going to get you where you wanted to be. So I feel like they could do a progression server with a Season of Mastery style X XP buff. Just 40%. And that would probably satiate a lot of people's desires. Yeah, I, I really wish they would do that. And it would be, it'd be, you know, one server per reason, so not a lot of different servers to maintenance. And it would just progress through the expansions every three months. <laughs> 40% <laughs> bonus XP was good, Jason, but 69% would be nice. Yeah, it would. That's absolutely true, and they should strongly consider that. Yeah, it, it, could, it could be that much. You know, it probably still... Yeah, yeah. Like, vanilla era especially is still going to be quite a journey with, like, any kind of XP buff. So, yeah. I, I, I hope they do that someday. I, I, I think that would be a lot of fun to play on a progression server. Hey, good. And then people that love, like, a fresh start, they get a yearly fresh start, you know? Because people really like that. Alright, we need to buy a couple of things from the bartender. Let's see. Well met. Boop. Boop. Be good. Hi. Off with you. Safe travels. Off with you. Not off with me. Off with you. Well met. See you 
All right, level nine. That's awesome. One more level till we open up talent trees. Attention, off with you. How are you? Keep your feet on the ground. Safe travels. All right, so let's run back out to uh, Everstill Village. Brunal Village. I don't know where I got Everstill from. I'm just making up village names now. Uh, we'll head back out that way. I want to get the level 7 stuff done, and at that point, we'll probably hearth back to Elwyn. We have a level 7 crystal kelp. While I was fishing, I was trying to do some mining and some fishing and stuff off stream. And I have to admit, I almost died to the murlocs. <laughs> I thought, maybe I could do this level 7 quest before I take us into uh, Dunmoro. But maybe I'll just do this level 7 quest off stream. That's a good idea, right? And, uh, no. It was not a good idea, because I very nearly died. And that would have been a tough one to have to explain to you guys. I probably would have just rolled up another Paladin and got it back to level 7 and then explained what happened. It was a close one. Yeah, Mr. Santa, a lot of people feel the same way. Like, right now you can do vanilla in, in all of its incarnations. And you can do wrath. And then, yeah, pretty soon we're going to have Cataclysm. And, like, most likely all the wrath servers will roll into Cataclysm. That's our fear. You know, we could be wrong, but... If we are wrong, that creates other problems like we talked about. I, I think Cataclysm is most exciting for people who started WoW after. Because a lot of people didn't start playing WoW until Mista Pandaria, Warlords of Drain, or a lot of people started playing in Battle for Azeroth because of the huge marketing campaign they did for the game. Remember that like that scene, like the battle like outside of uh, outside of Undercity or Lordaeron or whatever, like the big cinematic battle. That was like really core Warcraft feeling and like BFA brought a lot of people to the game. So there are people who've never seen Cataclysm. Like, that's going to be really exciting to them. They know all the zones as they are, but they, they've never got to see the progression of, like, the vanilla zones into the Cata zones. But if you played Cata, like, if you played a bunch of Cata when it was out, you know, it's probably not as exciting. Like, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm not, like, super hyped for it. Not as hype as I was to get Burning Crusade again, and not as hype as I was to get Wrath of the Lich King again. And certainly not as excited as I am for, like, the future of a Season of Discovery and the future of Seasons. It's just kind of like, oh, cool, Cataclysm. We get to play in the Cataclysm era. I'm excited to check out some of the raids. Because I only ever really saw Firelands. Which was an awesome raid. So, yeah. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> some of you didn't start till after Dragonflight. True, true. It's weird... Oh man, like I can't imagine like coming into WoW like with Dragonflight, being Dragonflight, what pulls you into WoW. And then you have to listen to everybody say, oh man, this isn't World of Warcraft. This dragon stuff is for wussies. Like you get to listen to like the old school players just like totally bash Dragonflight from like a certain perspective, you know, saying that it's not really core Warcraft. And you're sitting there thinking like, this brought me into Warcraft. What's How is this mind? not Warcraft? Watch your back. Be it's good. really interesting how many, like, just the different generations of people that play WoW now. What's on your mind? Be good. Watch your back. Alright, so we have a kill quest now, level 8. Do I want to do the level 8 kill quest before I head back to Elwood Forest? Well, yeah, we could work on that. I don't see why not. Further concerns, this goes... Oh, that's Guard Thomas, that's Elwyn. Okay, we're good. 
Yeah, retail is fun. Like I, I, I sometimes have fun. Yesterday I did not have fun with retail, but sometimes I do. Yesterday I got on for the seeds of renewal patch. It, it was kind of a rough day. I probably shouldn't have been trying to stream anyway, but uh, I was kind of disappointed with how short the Gil Gilneas campaign was. It wasn't really a campaign. It was like a handful of quests. I kind of thought that after 10 years of like waiting for them to get their city back, that like the story around how they do it would have been a lot bigger. I would have liked to have seen like a full-blown campaign to get Gilneas back. A campaign that could have went into more detail uh, with Greymane's daughter, maybe let us get to know her a little bit more intimately before they did all their touchy-feely like cutscene stuff at the end that really didn't resonate with me because I, I haven't spent a lot of time with Gen, especially recently, and we haven't spent a lot of time with his daughter really at all. And having a nice big campaign to take back Gilneas would have been a huge opportunity to really develop those characters, like making them the forefront of the story, like in a way that they never really have been. All I remember about Gen is like he's the angry guy who like tried to kill Sylvanas back in like Legion or whatever expansion it was. I don't feel like I've spent a lot of time with him to really get to know him. So I, ju I just wish they'd have given that more room to breathe. It was such a like big moment in the lore for it just to be kind of like over, like throw away. It's a, it's huge, like just wasted ability, wasted content basically. Did I try the follower dungeons? No, I, I I don't understand who the follower dungeons are for. I didn't try them because they were only. I think it's only regular difficulty. It's not even like heroic difficulty. I'll probably try them eventually just to see like how the AI does. Oh, this looks fun. Let's uh, let's run from this. Let's bubble. Let's just uh, let's skedaddle. Let's pop a potion just to be super safe. We gotta leash these guys. There we go. Now we're fine. Yeah, I, I think about it because like I'm a solo player, right? I, I do I do most of my content solo. So I, I think I understand the solo player mentality and have a pretty good grasp on like what a solo player wants. But for me, like, queuing up for five mans, that is a solo activity. Like, especially when we're talking about just doing normal or heroic. Like, if I want to do a five man, like, I don't feel like I have to really be social or communicate with people or anything. I, I see queuing up for a five man as a solo activity. I guess it could be, like, people that just have, like, no, no time to play. And they can't even wait, like, the seven minutes for a queue to pop. They have to get on and they have to run their dungeon right now. I guess for those, like, seven people <laughs> who are so incredibly time-strapped that they can't even wait in a really quick queue, like, maybe it's for those people. Because I don't, I don't think that the follower dungeons are necessarily like, for solo people, because, you know, solo players have played WoW for decades, and we've, we've been fine. Lael, good afternoon, man. Thank you. Thank you for being here. It would be cool if you take them on like dungeons and they had like witty commentary that was like voice acted. Maybe you could like progress like a bar with them to like you, you like build your relationship with the followers and like they give you rewards and stuff. Maybe like they give you cosmetics, like specialized cosmetics for whatever their class are by like progressing their bar with them. Like some, some kind of cool mechanic, like I feel like it needs to have more of a reason to exist. Because I don't really understand it. <laughs> okay, so you say since you're still learning to tank, you can jump into a dungeon like that and figure out a route at your own pace. That's really that's really smart. Look at that. See, as a person who doesn't play like a lot of retail, and as a person who doesn't do mythics at all, like I don't think about that. I don't think about trying to figure out the route because like I don't. I just don't do a lot of five mans in retail because I'm not. I don't like the mythic mentality anyway. So yeah, maybe if you're someone who's trying to teach yourself like a new role, you're trying to get into mythics, and you just want to see it, like, without having to be dragged along by a group of players going way too fast, that makes a lot of sense. Yep, see, for me, like, I don't know. Yeah, I guess, especially if you're coming late into the expansion, like, if I wanted to learn the dungeons, I would have to do the, the allied companions. I don't think I've run, I've run like three five-man dungeons in all of Dragonflight. Like, in Shadowlands, I didn't run any five-man dungeons that I remember at all. Because everything's about Mythic now, and I, I hate the time trial aspect of Mythic. 
I hate the rush, 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 rush mentality. I hate the blame mentality when, like, you wipe and somebody's key depletes and then it's somebody's fault. I hate all that toxicity. So I, I don't think I would ever need to use them for that because, like, I just don't really plan to do a lot of five mans in retail. But if I really wanted to, I guess I could learn the, the runs at least with the companions. Drop 421 gear? That's good. You, you can get, like, but if you just do world quests and stuff, like... I've just been doing, like, world quests every couple days. I think my gear score is, like, 435. It only took a couple days to get to that. I did all the story quests for, uh... For the Emerald Dream. I did those story quests, I did all the side quests, and then I cleared the world map a couple times on different days of world quests. And just doing that, like, and upgrading my gear with the tokens and stuff that I got, I'm up to, like, 435 gear score. So, it's it's actually pretty easy for a solo player in, in uh, retail to get gear. Ooh, YouTube is telling me we had a little lag spike. I don't see it now. Everything seems fine now. We lost 658 frames. Those poor frames. Those poor frames. Is hardcore going to TBC in the future? No. See, that's the, we, we kind of been talking about this all morning. There is no TBC, there is no way to play the Burning Crusade. Uh, Hardcore is a classic era server, which means that it stops at 60. And it's not a progression server. Blizzard don't seem to know, like, about progression servers. So, like, these cla these servers are never going to progress into the next expansion. That's, that's not how it works. Uh, classic era is simply the, the vanilla 1 to 60 content. And then you have Wrath of the Lich King, classic. And in Wrath, you can level from 1 to 80. You know, you can go through Outland. But there is no Burning Crusade version, nor do the Classic Era servers progress. Alex, you say they're doing live maintenance. <laughs> Playing hardcore is risky. Everything I do is risky. Yeah, risk is my middle name. Yeah, it's probably like fighting these leopard gnomes especially. If I was on a caster, I probably wouldn't do it. But, um, yeah. It'll be okay. Oh yeah, yeah, private servers. Yeah, I don't, I don't play on private servers. I, I've never even been tempted. And for what I do, I, I can't play on private servers anyway, because I, I can't, like, hang out with you guys and play on a private server, and I can't record stuff on a private server. Hey Alex, maybe sometime this morning, maybe if you if you want to risk it, maybe you could escort me uh, through the wetlands. Uh, at, at level 10, I would like to try to get to the night elf areas. If you're going to be around and if you don't mind. Right on, man. I appreciate it. I want to get this character, like, way ahead of the leveling curve. Like, exactly what I did on the Season of Discovery Priest. Because that felt really good. It felt really good to hit level 25 and to not have touched anything in uh, Duskwood yet.
What's max level in hardcore? It, yeah, it's uh, it's level 60. It's, we've been talking about it a little bit this morning in different versions of WoW and where everything's capped at. Cla this is a classic era server, so classic era is always capped at 60. Even like Season of Discovery, even though it's like a new season, there's a bunch of changes, it's still a classic era server, so it is also going to be capped at 60. So classic era is 60, and then Wrath of the Lich King is 80. And there is no Burning Crusade. And it's really interesting to me, like, how many people have an interest in WoW, but they don't know, like, the different server types. It's not well explained. I, I don't know if maybe Blizzard even has, like, a, a quick reference resource to explain to people, like, at a glance, like, what the different ways to play WoW are and what the eras or level caps are. Because I, I think it, it confuses a lot of people. Especially people who are just like casually interested or they're thinking about playing or thinking about coming back. I think it's probably very confusing or or it's not confusing and they just don't know how many options there are. Like some people think there's only one way to play classic. Alex, three weeks till the next phase of SOD, it feels like a long time. See, yeah, I, I've just been like, I haven't been thinking about it. It was nice to be able to get back into hardcore and to really have the time to do that. To have the time to really sink my teeth back into it. So I, I've been pretty happy. Uh, and yeah, I've basically decided just to keep, to, just to make a go of it on my priest. I'm gonna have the shaman and I'm gonna like continue to level up the shaman, but... I'm gonna make a go of it, you know, from 25 to 40 on the priest. I don't know if I'm going to heal or, or focus on shadow damage, but I think I'm just going to make that my main for the season and uh, and just do my best to level up and just hope I don't get ganked a thousand times in Stranglethorn. Yeah, three weeks is a little while. It's still quite a bit of time. It's enough time that you could easily level up a character to 25 right now. Yeah, I, I want to be excited about phase two. I'll probably I'll be more excited when it's closer. I'll be I'll be more excited when it's gonna be like the next day. Then I might get excited for it. I think. Oh, a, a black pouch. Uh, we are now officially cursed. So yeah, welcome to being cursed. We didn't need that bag. I didn't want that bag, and now we're cursed. But yeah, I think I'll get excited. I don't know. There, there's a couple things that I really <laughs> that I really don't like about the season of discovery. Unfortunately, the things that I don't like are ingrained integral parts of the season. I don't I don't find rune acquisition fun or interesting, and I don't like and I don't find the waylaid supplies interesting gameplay. And the rune acquisition and waylaid supplies are like the two cornerstones of leveling up in Season of Discovery. So unless they make some big changes or they add some different stuff, like, I'm gonna be in the same boat I was with the first phase, which is that I, I think finding runes is really annoying when they're when they're not ones you can get by yourself or they're not ones that are kind of obvious that you encounter in the open world naturally. Like, when they're not that, when they have to be looked up, when they have to be grouped up, I find that really, really annoying. It's not interesting to me as a solo player. It's not engaging, it's not fun, I don't like it. Like, I can't even, like, there's no way to quantify, like, you know, or, like, I just don't like it. It's not fun. <laughs> and, and same thing with the waylaid supplies. Like, getting, only being able to hold on to one empty waylaid supply crate, but getting them every nine kills 
and only being able to turn them in at a major city is very, very frustrating. Uh, there's a couple things they could do to fix that. A, like the easy thing they could do, just let you carry as many waylaid supplies as you desire. Let, let, let us carry all of them. Who cares? And uh, the other thing they could do is if they want it to be like, if they want you to stop everything you're doing to go turn in the crates, that's okay, but put people at the hubs. Let there be a supply person at every questing hub so that if I get a crate right now, I can stop what I'm doing, I can go turn it in, but I don't have to go all the way to Ironforge. So yeah, there's a couple things they can do to save waylaid supplies for me, but right now I hate it. I cringe every time I get one. I don't want to grind them. I don't care about getting to Honored. I like, I don't care. If it's not fun or interesting gameplay and it's in a season like where it could be changed, I would rather just have it be changed than to persist in a state that I just, I don't like it. Yeah, drop it on the ground, spit three times to remove the curse of that, yeah. That's every, every rune acquisition, yeah. It just doesn't make sense. Today I encountered one on the Warlock, a low-level rune on the Warlock. It was like, you need, you need Yeti blood from one cave. You need wolves, a wolf jaw from Cold Ridge Valley. You have to fight a certain, a certain troll guy in the Frost Main Hold and get a book. Then you have to go to the Shimmer Ridge and use an item. How would I know all that shit without looking it up? It's two different items off of two different enemies that are not near each other. The items do seemingly don't have much to do with each other. And then it's a third item off a random mob in a cave that's also very distant from either of the two other things. And then I'm supposed to take those three things to somewhere in the Shimmer Ridge and use the items to create a ritual to spawn a guy that I then have to kill for a rune. And that's, that's like some silly tanking cooldown. It's like 30% dodge. That's crazy. Like, I would never know to do all that stuff if I didn't look it up. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't be like, hey, I should click these. I should go take all three of these unrelated items. I should go to the Shimmer Ridge and I should use them. I, I would never think to do that. And that's like most runes. Oh, that was how to get rid of the curse. It's okay, it spawned this conversation about rune acquisition because what you said is like, that's how you get like a priest rune, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I, I think I got a priest rune by doing that. So, yeah, it's the same thing. It has Monkey Island vibes. Yeah, right, but it shouldn't because it's an MMORPG and not like some sadistic like puzzle solving game. Right, and like in what it, what happens is like you don't figure it out on your own. You just look you just look it up on Wowhead like I did. I got an item and I was like, hmm, what's this item? I thought a little bit deeper into the cave because I thought maybe there will be like a summoning stone in this cave and then maybe I just click the item there and then no, there wasn't. So then I looked it up on Wowhead. And because otherwise I never would have figured it out. Someone would have either had to tell me or I would have had to look it up. Otherwise I would have had a wolf jaw and yeti blood just chilling in my inventory forever. And I would never know what to do with them. And I don't think having to look something up on Wowhead is very compelling gameplay. I would rather just learn the ability at level whatever from my trainer, like every other ability. And then the puzzle solving stuff can like give me gear or like a new staff, some rings, a trinket, um, a mount. Like the puzzle solving stuff, the discoveries can be something else. The discoveries can be gold, they can be a new quest with rewards, like the, all that puzzle solving Monkey Island stuff. You can still have all that stuff for the people that want to look it up on Wowhead. But don't, don't have the rewards be my character's actual fundamental abilities. Just give me my abilities, okay? Put them in the talent tree so I have to buy them. I don't care what you do. But yeah, I don't I don't want to have to go to Wowhead and like look up all these things. Like that's not compelling gameplay.
Yeah, and that's probably how I'll approach it now. Like, if I were to play a character now, I would just get them to level 25, and then I would look up all the runes and go get them afterwards. I mean, probably not all the runes. I would probably only get the runes that I thought I was going to use. Because that's what I've done so far. Like, even my priest does not have all its runes. The priest has the runes that I think I'm going to use. And those are the only ones that I really plan to collect. I, I don't plan to, like, collect all of my runes if I don't feel like I'm going to use them all. Maybe when they have dual spec, if they put dual spec into the game, that might Hello. compel me to like find a few more, if I could have dual spec. Be good. Off with you. Watch your back. All right, so let's let's see. Let's turn in the level eight quest. And at that point, I think before I go to before I go to Teldrassil, I, I think I want to do this level seven. Well, we could, we could get to level 13 before it goes gray. Maybe I don't have to do that right now. It would be easier for me just to at least make the run over to Thelsimar from here. Sod feels like you're playing a beta. Yeah, I mean, you basically are. You're... you're playing untested ideas with the idea that like in each phase they they will iterate so one of the things i'm really interested to see is like how much actually changes between the phases how different are the phases going to feel is it just going to feel like it felt like 1 to 20 but now we're going to 40 or is there going to be like significantly different things to do is is the flow of questing going to feel any different is rune acquisition going to be different are they going to do anything different with reputation or with waylaid supplies? Like, I, I'm really curious to find out, like, is it going to be different at all? Or is it simply going to be more of the same? Because ultimately, I think it's, it's okay to have me playing a beta. But what I would like to see in a beta, I would like to see things grow and change and evolve over time. I would like to see iteration. If we're, if I'm going to be participating in the in the sod permanent beta, how much work do I think it took for them to make sod? Pro probably quite a bit. It's a small team, so it probably took that small team of people like quite a bit of uh, time, effort. Yeah, keep in mind like Classic <laughs> doesn't have a huge development team. They have literally like four or five people. And one of those people is a boss and probably doesn't do like a lot of actual development. And so between like having to brainstorm everything out and just having to come up with like the raw ideas between a, uh, such a small team and then having to do the actual implementation, it probably took them a while. Yeah, they, pro they were probably at work on it for a long time before they ever like even hinted at it. But I would kind of hope now that like the foundation is laid and the server is up and running, that making changes like phase to phase, I'm hoping that's like a lighter lift and that they're able to be agile in that process. Because I think that's really key to keeping a season that if a season is going to last an entire year, then you should really keep it fresh and like make each phase really something to look forward to. Because right now, in my mind, I'm expecting more of the same. So I'm not, like, super excited. To me, it's it's level 25 to 40 leveling. I know exactly what it looks like. And so, unless mind? they're going to make some significant changes, like, Be good. I'm interested. I want to keep leveling in the season. But right now, I want to level in the season because I want to get to 60. Because it looks like they have a lot of, like, new endgame stuff planned for level 60. I'm not as interested right now in the individual phases. Um, unless they show that they're going to make big changes. Be sad, dog. Four months, man. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. See you soon. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go at least get the flight point for Thelsimar. 
it's a little bit of a run. And then that way, like if I if I want to, if I want to do the Crystal Kelp quest before I go to the Night Elf lands, I can just jump on a flight, at least get me out to Felsmar. Also though, now that I'm thinking about it, and this is gonna be critical, do I think I grabbed the flight point in Ironforge? I don't think so. If I'm being honest with myself, I don't think I grabbed the Iron Forge flight point. So I'm probably gonna have to do that. Also, it'd probably be cool just to like ding level 10. Let's fight a couple of these wolves. Let's go grab that copper. And we'll just try to like grind up to level 10 so we can get into our talents. So we can at least talk about our talents. I also have these wonderful potions that I should be using that I'm not using right now. That's a pretty big miss. Yeah, Alex, exactly. Train axes as well. Yeah, and I set myself some gold. You're right. So I, I did this so I could train axes. And then I kind of forgot to train axes. And obviously also forgot to grab the flight points because that is what I do. If I ding level 10, I can train level 10 abilities also. So fair warning today, if, if I cringe at any weird time or I make any strange faces like I'm in agonizing pain, uh, it's because I, I pulled a muscle group like somewhere between my shoulder blades yesterday uh, when I was working out. Actually, it was like, it's a, it was an older muscle pull that I thought was like going away. And I just stressed it too much like on some incline bench press. I, I went like, I went too far back and I just felt like, it, it felt like a muscle like snapped inside of me. <laughs> it was a disquieting feeling. And like because of that I've been in a lot of pain since then as long as I don't move very much like I don't feel much uh, But if like like reaching over to pick my coffee mug up if I if I have my elbow in a certain position And it tweaks my shoulder blade muscle in a, in a special way then I, I feel this like shooting pain So if you see me cringe or wince <laughs> or, or cry on stream don't take it personally it might it might be something that happens to me today because if I move wrong or I move too quickly, it's just like, it hurts a lot. I, I have a muscle relaxer <clears throat> slash pain reliever, but I don't, I don't like taking this stuff unless I absolutely have to. Uh, because like in my mind, like I want to know exactly how much it hurts so I can assess like how serious it actually is. And I always worry with like muscle relaxers and pain relievers that they would allow me to have like a range of mobility that is not good for the injury. So like I try not to take stuff. I, I woke up at four in the morning in a lot of pain. I took something then because I wanted to get back to sleep. But like throughout my waking day, I try not to. It's another reminder that like A, I'm getting older. <laughs> my body is aging. And also, I was just being stupid. Like, I, I, I had pulled the muscle, like, a couple weeks ago, and it, but it wasn't as bad as this. But I knew I had pulled it. And I thought it was basically healed up. And I didn't think that particular motion was going to hurt it. But it did. And I was, I was stupid. Uh, so we did get level 10. Uh, we're not in the military ward. We are up this way. So let's go grab the flight point. Step one, flight point. Step two, axes. Step three, training our class. 
Yeah, I might take some Motrin. Last time I took Motrin for this pain, though, like, it almost felt like it made it worse. I took ibuprofen when I hurt this muscle originally. And when I did that, for some reason, it just it felt like it made it worse. Weapons trainer, I feel like, is somewhere nearby. Let's let's ask our buddy the guard here. No, it's not. This one is in the military ward. Okay. We were right where we needed to be. For some reason, I have a memory of it being in the outer ring. I don't know why. Jory, good afternoon. Good evening to you. Welcome to the stream. Do we need anything okay. from the gnome? Need assistance? Uh, no, she can't teach us anything. Hmm. Goodbye now. Alright, so we got the flight point, we got the axes. Let's go to our class trainer. And then I think I'll make the run out to Thelsimar. weird that the paladins are in the mystic ward and not in the military ward. John, good morning. Welcome to the stream, buddy. How are you? It, it helps if you have available ticked. I I, ha I did not have available ticked. That's useful. <laughs> I was kind of worried there for a minute. Uh, Lay on hands, great. Seal of righteousness, rank two. We need. We'll, we'll train everything: blessing and protection, devotion, or a two. Okay, there we go. Yeah, Alex. Yep, yeah, right. No, I'm not a warrior. <laughs> Close. See you soon. I'm a warrior of the light. It's almost the same thing. Okay, so for talents, I think we're going to go right into Divine Strength and Improved Seal of Righteousness, which is the only seal that I'm going to use. So we definitely need that. And then after that, we'll probably go Improved Blessing of Might. Uh, parry Chance could be okay. Yeah, I think I'll go Parry. Yeah, okay, so that's kind of the plan for now.
<laughs> Alex, you're barking up the wrong tree, man. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna use seal of command. Yeah. Seal of command is like the damage lottery. It's like you you can do more damage, but you probably won't. Yeah, I'm gonna do exactly what I did on the level 39 pal that we lost. I really liked the simple like one button rotation. It was pretty powerful. The cool thing about it was that we never ran out of mana. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the seal of righteousness thing, and we're just gonna we're just gonna double down on it, and it's gonna be fine. The great thing is, you know, we'll never run out of mana. Uh, okay, so are we done here? I think we're done here for now. Uh, I don't. I shouldn't need to train anything up. Okay. Yeah, let's head out. I'm gonna run to Thelsimar and then, you know, question mark, question mark, somehow we get to Menethil. I, w I wanna get over into the Night Off lands. A part of me wants to do this, like, before I leave, but, like, part of me doesn't care. Uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We can hit level 13, and if we hit level 13, it'll still be worth full experience. So, like, maybe what we do is we, we plan to hang out in the Night Elf area until, like, level 12. Once we're getting through level 12 and we're getting close to 13, that would be a good time to head back and tackle this one. And then spend some time doing the other low-level stuff in the Elwyn Forest. I want to get as far ahead of the leveling curve as I possibly can. And I just I just want to figure out like if I if I can do it the way I did it on the Sod Priest. Because the Sod Priest got to level 25 and I hadn't even touched Duskwood yet. I, I did a little bit in Red Ridge, but I hadn't touched Duskwood. And I feel like I had a, I had green quest basically all the way to 25. So I would like to replicate that in hardcore. Uh, because yeah, that's like where we have the problem is by the time we get to like level 40 we are out of low level stuff to do So I'm, I'm hoping to change that on this character And that'll cut down that'll cut down a little bit on our reliance on having rested XP If we just have a, a bunch of quests to still do that are lower level And also dungeons. I, I should probably get myself a shield and a one-hander by the time we're ready to do dead mines. Because I'll probably want to have like dungeon experience and dungeon quests done. Uh, I am making a lot of the wildlife very unhappy. Uh, two of them? Yeah, we can take two of them. Maybe not three of them, though. Okay, 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 three of them. Okay, okay, we're fine. We're still fine. I might try to sneak a heal in after I kill this next one. Maybe I'm gonna pop a potion instead. Let's pop a potion. This was riskier than it had to be. Oh. <laughs> Two experience points. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, the good thing is, like, getting into Teldrassil now makes it easier to do Duskwood later, makes it easier to do uh, Ashenvale later. But if you don't come to Teldrassil early, if, if you hold off, it just makes it harder to eventually continent jump. Like, you have to jump continents, but if you wait, it just makes it a lot harder. And then you miss, you miss a lot by doing it that way. Like, the Hunter went to Darkshore. The Hunter went to Darkshore, like, in, like, at, like, level 16 or 17. And the Hunter still ran out of stuff to do. Not ran out of stuff to do, but ran out of lower level quests. We're at a point where we only have, like, high level quests.
maybe it's just unavoidable that that happens, but we'll see. Sorry, I, I have to I have to get any ore that I pass. I should have did some mining when we were in Iron Forge. That would have been a good time for it, right at the Great Forge. My bags are filling up with ore. Oh, there's another one around the side here. Yeah, maybe once I get over to Teldrassil, although I don't know if Teldrassil is going to have what I need to do smelting. Yeah, they, they must. They must have a, a, a forge somewhere, even though there's not a lot of ore. They'll probably have a, a forge. I hope. When I think about Dalinar, though, I, I don't... I can't visually remember in the little town of Dalinar if there is a forge or not. So we will we'll see, yeah. Hmm. I guess like worst comes to worst, somewhere in Darnassus, there's gotta be a forge. Because, like, there's got to be blacksmithing trainers in Darnassus, right? Do they not have any representation? You can smell where the bow and crossbow trainer is. Okay. Yeah, I know I know. in uh, in Darkshore there is because there's some dwarves there. Like, hanging out. But, yeah, there's, there's, there's got to be somewhere in Darnassus. Alex is at the bow and crossbow trainers. That's probably where we'll have to go. There are no blacksmithing trainers in Darnassus at all. Well, that's rude. I'm going to do this quest up here so I don't have to come back and do it later. I'm just going to do this on the way. We'll have to go do the, the Golbalar quarry stuff. But if I do this now, we won't have to come back out here. Vladislav, good evening. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, they have warriors. You'd think they'd have people that are interested in uh, in mining. I guess, like, there's no ore, right? There's no ore in Teldrassil? Is that a fact, or is it just very uncommon? If there's no ore, then I guess I get it. But I still feel like they would want to have representation for people who are traveling from abroad. You know? Because even though we can't work on mining, we could still do blacksmithing if we have materials. I 
how's the leveling going? It's going well. Yep, we're about to go to the Night Elf lands. Making sure that we can zone hop between all of the starting areas. So yeah, it's good. Interesting fight. I said that I stopped playing Paladin. Nah, I always get pulled back to the Paladin. I lost my last Paladin by falling off a boat, so that was a very unsavory way to lose a Paladin. Now, no matter what I say, you can rest assured I'll always get pulled back in. Ah, uh, that's nice. Alright, let's... Well, he's running to us, apparently. Nice. Alex, I appreciate it. My inventory is going to be full, but we can fix that somewhere. Thanks, man. Uh, this stuff we can all equip. Uh, let's do the mace for now while I fight this guy. Because uh, I have zero axe skill, but then we'll put on the axe afterwards. So that we can level that up. Alright, we're looking a little bit better equipped now. So that's awesome. Yeah, he would be a good hunter pet, wouldn't he? Bears aren't good pets in Classic, though. Yeah, I, in my opinion, the boar is the best pet. But that's only because it can charge and it can taunt. You got my attention. And it's beefy. Be good. All right, on the road we go. How about those lions? Yeah. Hey, they get another playoff game. That's awesome. I still think the Super Bowl is probably going to be Chiefs-Lions. It's either going to be Chiefs-Lions, or I guess it could be, it could end up being like 49ers-Ravens. One of those two things. Some permutation of those. Yeah, their second playoff win in 65 years. Yeah, it's it's been a rough uh, almost century. <laughs> it's been a rough half a century. All 
I guess having a Devotion Aura actually turned on would be a great idea. It's not helping us deactivate it. I don't know why, but it's always weird to me that paladins can equip axes. I have a false memory of, like, back in the day in actual vanilla. I have some embedded false memory that paladins were not able to wield axes. Maybe it was simply something that I was told one time that was not correct. Maybe, th I think that's what it is. I remember my friend who, like, you know, we kind of started, he started playing the game, like, in beta so he was like you know a little bit more experienced than me played a lot more than i did at the time and i remember him telling me that like as a pally we couldn't equip axes because there was a one-handed hatchet that would drop in like shadowfang keep and he was like oh you can't use that and that just became like an embedded memory that was like a false fact that like paladins cannot use axes so still to this day whenever i have an axe on a paladin it just feels weird Yeah, I always thought, like, I in my mind, it's maces and swords. Like, maces and swords, those are paladin weapons. An axe is a warrior's weapon. Or a shaman's weapon. You know what I mean? It doesn't strike me as very paladin-esque. And so that's why it was always really easy just to, like, kind of believe that, like, false fact that paladins just couldn't use axes. Because it made sense to me that they wouldn't be able to. Then again, when I think back, I think him and I were leveling a warrior paladin combo. <laughs> so maybe he just told me that because he wanted to have access to all of the axes that dropped. Because he was playing on a warrior. Ooh, there's uh, more copper over here somewhere. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah, if the if the Super Bowl is Lions Chiefs, I can't lose. Yeah, exactly. It'll be like it'll be the easiest Super Bowl to watch. Like the lowest my blood pressure has ever been during a Super Bowl. If it's Lions Chiefs, like I just at that point, I just I hope for a good game. Like the only way that could go wrong is if it's like a blowout on one side or the other. Well, but with those two teams, I don't think it could be a blowout on one side or the other. So yeah, like in that scenario, like whoever wins, I win. I'm gonna pick these quests up so that later I can I can fly in and I don't I don't have to come down here to get these. What's on your mind? I'm just gonna grab them now. It's gonna like inflate my quest log a little bit, but that should be okay. It says I'm doing skinning herbalism in the description of the stream. The I believe it. it. It's the template from the... Uh, it's the template from the warrior stream. I just, I just copy the template and I change the title and I forget to change the description. 
Let me uh, let me have a look. Yes, yeah, it says you see Night Elf Warrior, Night Elf Warrior leveling gameplay. Nope, nope, nope. Let's uh, just change that now. Human Paladin leveling gameplay. Uh, professions, mining, blacksmithing. There we go. Perfect. Thanks. Now we're up to date. Now the description of the stream that hardly anybody reads is accurate. It would be cool if one day in like a classic plus situation that we can have high elves or blood elves or some kinds of other races added to classic era would be really cool. We, sh we should get some more more races. And we should also get more classes. Like we should get like the vanilla monk. I want a vanilla monk. I want a vanilla style death knight. I want a vanilla style demon hunter. Like I, w I want these, cl I want like a vanilla version of those classes to eventually be put into like a classic plus server that would be ideal what i consider tanking not only what i consider it but yeah i will be i will be tanking some stuff on this character no doubt uh, starting probably with dead mines around level 22 21 22 ish I'm not going prod, no. No, we're, we're gonna do a leveling spec. But I will, I might, I might come down far enough to grab consecration, because I'm gonna go... Oh, I, I, firstly, I need to spend talent points at all. Yeah, I'm gonna go Divine Strength, 5 points. I'm gonna be using Seal of Righteousness, so I'm gonna do 5 points in Improved Seal of Righteousness. And then I might come down and grab consecration for when we tank. Just for like, some really easy AoE threat. And then after that, we'll probably be going into Blessing of Might, and then Deflection. Uh, in Prot, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not going to go right into Prot. I'm not going to do a Prot spec right now. Maybe eventually, like maybe when we get to a point where we have a lot of talent points to spend, then maybe we could do a Prot spec. If I find like a really good one-hander, like just an amazing one-hander drops, then maybe we would do a prod spec. But right now we're going to do a two-hander build. Seal of Righteousness is simply so I can have like a one-button rotation. That's why I like Seal of Righteousness. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna weave in a Seal of Crusader. I'm not gonna use Seal of Command. I'm just gonna straight up do a Seal of Righteousness build. It keeps the rotation really, really simple. And it allows me to save a ton of mana. Marson, good afternoon, good evening to you. Welcome to the stream. All right, here's where I might have to start paying attention to what's going on. Uh, we want to avoid the orcs. There's an orc up top. And there are usually orcs hanging out like right here. Maybe somebody's cleared them.
did I try private servers? No, I've never played on a private server. And for what I do, like I can't play on a private server and stream it. I can't play on a private server and make content on it. So for me, it's 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 a non-starter. I don't really have any interest in it. That was really scary. <laughs> I, I saw the aggro, I, I heard the hiss, and I got scared. Let's make sure we don't uh, outrange Alex. Somebody here didn't make it. This is the body of a person who tried to do this run all by themselves, at probably a really low level. Such is the fate of many night elves who try in vain to get to other starting areas so that they can actually level up and play the game. Dear God, I didn't even see the one behind us. I saw the one in front of us, and I did not see the one that was coming from behind. <laughs> very, very scary. Another body. I should make a video explaining zone hopping. That's not a bad idea. A lot of times I just assume that people already know everything I know and then more. But yeah, I mean I have been playing the game for 20 years. I do know a little bit about the game. That'd be a pretty decent like topic, like a, a thing that I could like physically illustrate with like a few easy cuts and a little bit of narration. And then maybe some like, you know, like why is it so important? Like what levels to do it? 
Yeah, that's that's a really good idea, Patrick. I've thought about stuff like that before, but never never that topic exactly. Maybe I'll maybe I'll take a pass at a draft this evening. Write write it out, see if I can quickly map it out. It's like three different topics, like why is it important to do it? Like what's the buy-in? Why do you need to do this? Secondly, when do I do it? And then thirdly, where do I go? How many characters have I had across 20 years? I mean, since Hardcore started, like thousands, 723.5. Yeah, lots of characters. A lot more so because of Hardcore, and because of all the different versions of Classic that we can now play. So now we can play Sod, now we can play Wrath, now we can play Hardcore, now we can play Classic Era, now we can play Retail, like, yeah. Way too many. But also not enough. Yeah, yeah, people could use Rested XP add-on, just follow the steps. I think like I think like you know some people like to do that, but I think a lot of people just kind of like to to find out and then to have like a general idea. Because to me, it's not completely prescriptive. To me, there's like a range when you can do it. You don't have to do it at an exact level or in an exact order. You know, it doesn't have to be that like concrete. It's it's ultimately like really simple. Like you know, you, you hit level seven, go to someone else's starting area. You hit level 10, go to the third starting area, the one you haven't been to yet. You hit level 13, go back to the first starting area, finish up some green quests there. And at that point, the, the philosophy is simply like, snipe your green quest. You have a couple green quests in an area, go back to that area. Now you got some green quests somewhere else, go to that area. Like, it's more of like, just like a, a habit or a practice. It doesn't have to be like completely prescriptive, like do it now, go here, take these quests, come back. Like it, it can be more of a general idea. And I think as a general idea or recommendation, it makes it a lot easier for people to like understand it. And it makes it a lot easier for them to feel like they can act on it. I got the flight point. Yeah, yeah, I did. Alex, thank you so much for escorting me, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, this is going to help this character out immensely. Getting ahead of that leveling curve. And so I'll grab the flight point here, and then I think I need to go to Darnassus, though. Like, yeah, obviously, like, I need to go to Darnassus. I need to hang out in Darnassus for a minute because I need to do some smelting. If I can smelt then I need to do so. And if I can't smelt, then I don't know. Then my bags are going to be pretty full most of the time. The boat is here. Uh, yeah, see, I'm going to miss this boat. Because I, I do need to grab the flight point. It's kind of a bummer. Like, rarely ever can you get off of one boat and go right onto another boat. But we are going to have to take the next one. Uh, thankfully I have fishing, so we can fish off the dock for a little bit and get that leveled up while we wait. I can smell- yeah, I can smelt here. Let's go do that. Yeah, let's smelt here over by the dwarves. It's really rainy here. Oh my god. The visibility is like, low. Yeah, smelting here is a good idea. I, I do need to refill my coffee. So I- I, I might do- uh, I might be smelting and going AFK. That might be what we do. We might. It, we're about two hours in, so we might take a little break here. And uh, and if, if so, I will. I will set us to smelting. All of the things. Let's grab the flight point now, so I just don't have to worry about forgetting it.
were schools open today? Yeah, they were, unfortunately. Like, when I woke up this morning, there was, like, five or six more inches of snow. And it was still actively snowing. And it was really snowy. And the roads were not safe. Like, I'm a pretty good driver when it comes to driving in snow. I've done it most of my life. Uh, but the roads weren't safe for people to be out on trying to get their kids to school. They, they should have closed them for another day. It was, uh, it's pretty stupid. And then tomorrow's a half day. Like, they should have just, they should have just shut them down for the rest of the week. If they were smart, they would still have, like, school at home options in place. But they're not smart, so they don't have any of that technology in place. Yeah, we had to go to school today. Alright, so guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the smelting. I'm going to go AFK for 10 minutes. And, uh, yeah. Hope to see you guys then. We will head over to Teldrassil and begin our questing in the Night Elf area. I will see you guys on the flip side.
All right, while we're here, we probably want to do a little blacksmithing. the next level of mining uh can we do that here is there is there a trainer here yes yes there is that is a great idea John, good afternoon to you. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, we'll see if I can keep blacksmithing leveled up this time. We, we've tried it a couple times in the past. 
And, um, you know, usually mining falls behind first. But we'll see. I'm going to try to keep up on it. Will this guy will this guy be able to train the next rank of blacksmithing? I'm assuming that he can. Journeyman, we should still only need journeyman. It's nice that they put these guys here. I think I'm just going to make the rest of them and we'll get whatever skill ups we can get off of the stones before we do anything else. It's, it's iron that typically becomes the problem. Yeah, that sounds about right. Iron was about where the paladin back on blood cell buccaneers stopped. Once we needed a bunch of iron but really couldn't find it have to run circles in the wetlands or something. Yeah, we'll make sure to find low level stuff to hit over in uh over in Teldrassil for the axe. Absolutely. Camping King, good afternoon. Welcome to the stream. Michael, thanks for stopping by, man. I appreciate that. Alright, so let's train the next rank of mining. And then let's see what Watch the blacksmithing guy can teach us. What can I do for you? A lot of stuff, and I have the money for it right now, so let's go ahead and learn everything. Be good. And then what are we gonna level up on? Weirdly, there's no yellow. Everything right now is either green or orange. I guess we'll make some copper chain pants. Uh, vendoring would be good. Let's vendor. I've the finest wares in the land. We probably don't need a bunch of these. I'm going to keep one stack. And we'll make sure to apply that to our weapon. Let's get rid of everything we don't need. I'm going to keep the hammer. Just so we can kind of keep it skilled up. Requires a blacksmith hammer. Yeah, that, that would require a blacksmith well, hammer, then. wouldn't it? Let's grab See one of those. Soon. And we'll make all these. I should put the gems in the bank? Yeah, I, I should. I'm assuming I'm going to need them at some point. For, like, specific patterns. Primordial, good afternoon. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping by.
Great to meet you. Keep your feet on the ground. What can I do for you? Keep your feet on the ground. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing a little bit of cooking. Uh, but maybe we'll wait until we're over in... The Dalinar. We'll have to buy tinder and some wood. I didn't see a cooking fire, so... Maybe the night elves don't need to eat. I'm not sure. There was a cook fire? I thought I saw one when we came into town, I just didn't see it on the way out. Oh well, I'll, I'll find one in uh, Darnassus. I'm sure there's, yeah, I'm sure there's one in Darnassus somewhere. If we can get to 50, then I can learn, uh, I can learn some recipes. Right here, Longjaw Mud Snappers. Uh, for now, while we wait for the boat, let's go ahead and we'll put the fishing rod on and we will do a little bit of fishing. Of course, the one time I set out to do a little fishing, the boat comes early. Alright, I don't want to get taken out by the boat. We don't want to get stuck in another boat. We've gotten stuck in enough boats for one lifetime. The Darkshore Grouper, I'm pretty sure I need these for a quest here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang on to this one. I should stop hugging the boat, yeah. I feel like they should have like some kind of protection built in. I don't feel like you should be able to get stuck in the armpit of the boat. It's kind of a weird place to let a character get stuck to begin with.
I'm gonna grab the flight point here so that I don't forget. Because odds are, when we're ready to go back to Elwyn, we are gonna hearth back. I'm gonna leave the hearthstone set to Goldshire. That's gonna make getting back to Eastern Kingdoms a lot easier. I always forget this zone has some of the best music in the entire game, so now we get to enjoy the music. Traveling in a boat isn't always safe. Yeah, you're right about it being realistic. When we fell off the boat in the middle of the ocean and drowned on the level 39 Paladin, I thought this is the most like normal, realistic death that one could uh, envision. It's like you just fall off a boat, you know, and nobody notices and nobody saves you. It's a very mundane way to go as far as like World of Warcraft goes. I, I think that's fine for now. We have plenty of inventory space. And so th there shouldn't be anything else we need to do here besides cook. We can find a, uh, a cook fire somewhere. We can go over to the cooking trainer. You would think they might have a fire over that way. We can go investigate. Uh, if not, we will need to find a trade goods vendor. Better than the death by disconnect? Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't... Yeah. Yeah, losing the paladin by falling off the boat much better than losing the mage because the server lagged out for a minute. Yep, that one was just kind of a bummer. Um, I am not really seeing any cook fires. Maybe I can cook at this table, I don't know. How are they doing their cooking if there's no fire? Even like the emblem is a cook fire? Okay, maybe at the stove here I can do it. There we go. Th that's cool. <laughs> Both ways suck. Well, yeah, yeah. Either way of dying sucks. Being stuck in the side of a boat and then deposited in the middle of the ocean upon zoning, like, that sucked. But it was like, okay, like, yeah. At least we got to, like, experience it happening. Dying to a disconnect is like, okay, nothing really happened except the game stopped working. In one scenario, the game is working as intended. In the other scenario, the game has stopped working. So I think the disconnect one is worse. Alright, we hit 50, which is awesome because now I can, uh, I can learn this and then I can cook these guys. And we can get them out of the inventory, too. Actually, these guys I can hang on to because... Yeah, 243 HP. Okay, we'll put this on the bar. We can use this. Maple, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping by. May the stars guide you.
Yeah, that's a fair point, Alex. We don't really need the food. We don't really need it. That's true. I, I plan to never need to drink either. It's it's my goal. We'll see how long. We'll see how long we can go before we have to sit and drink. Because I feel like we'll be good. I don't plan to blow a lot of mana. We're going to have a very low mana rotation. Mabel, I appreciate you uh, seeing me pop up in your feed and checking out the stream, man. Thank you so much. All right, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to pop a few of our elixirs. If I don't do it now, I will probably forget. Crusader Strike, Alex? How dare you say that ability name in a hardcore stream? How dare you? Yep, this is some of the best music in the game right here. Absolutely. Everybody, remember to hydrate. Very, very important. Have I tried the follower dungeons in retail yet? No, I, I did the Gilneas questing, like the five quests that there were. And I tried the archaeology thing, which I wasn't really like a big fan of. I didn't really have a lot of fun with that. I haven't tried the follower dungeons yet. I don't think they're for me. Somebody explained to me that they are going to use them to learn the routes of the five-man dungeons that they're not familiar with, so that when they go do Mythic, then they, they know some of the routes and they can kind of explore the dungeon at their own pace. And I, I think that's really cool. Because um, it, it does suck to when you're just trying to like see the dungeon to be dragged along by like a group that's trying to play like their mythic players. Even when you do it on like heroic. Even when you do five mans and retail on normal. The groups pull as if it's mythic because everybody is practicing for mythic. So they kind of have to play the same way no matter the level of the content. So someone, they explained to me, oh, you know, they're going to use the followers as a way to see the dungeons without uh, having other players around so I can see the value in that but I haven't done it myself yet I've only seen a handful of the five mans in Dragonflight because I basically stopped doing five mans when Legion came out and introduced Mythic I'm not a big fan of uh, time trial stuff like I, I don't like to rush I don't like the idea that there's like a, a route that you're supposed to know with all the skips and stuff I'm not really like a big fan of skips so I've come. basically avoided all five-man content ever since Legion came out, or introduced Mythics. Which is a shame, because in, in other versions of the game, like, five-man content is, like, the funnest content to do. But with the way people play in retail now, like, I just can't, like, I just can't really get interested in it. Alright, let's see, there should be quests basically everywhere. Let's go pick this one up first. George, good afternoon. Uh, can I help you decide which is better to play, Priest or Pally? I think in, uh, it, well, it depends on what version of the game you're talking about, but they're both viable, so it's just whatever flavor you like. How may I help? 
you know, with a priest you have power with shield, you can you can stop all incoming damage for a time. And then on the pally, I think you do a lot of flash heal spamming. Be careful. Till next we meet. Soren, good afternoon. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, okay, got that one. And then we also have to go out to the east for Zen. Zen Falhoth. We have to do his bidding. Alex, you left the stream yesterday. You, you didn't want to get spoiled by the Gilneas stuff. I mean, I, I wish I could say there was a lot of content, man. But, like, I went into it thinking it was going to be a full-fledged, like, campaign story that would get released week after week after week, but that's not what it is. Like, set your expectations more in the area of a side quest. It's over really quick. I am listening. My wife has brought me some soup, and some bread, and some crackers, and I'm probably going to eat some of this food pretty soon. A lot of people say the Paladin Healer is bad. Again, it depends on what version of the game. Like in, in Wrath of the Lich King, it's like the best healer in the game. Maybe in retail it's bad. The only thing Pallies are really good at in Classic Era is healing. Like, they're not really good tanks, and they're not really good DPS. So healing is actually one of the things in Classic Era that they're, they're actually pretty good at. But again, there's like 17 versions of the game. In Sod? Yeah, probably in Sod they probably, they probably aren't very good. I, I don't think they gave them- the reason is I don't think they gave them a lot of new, like, healing abilities. Whereas some other healers in Sod got new healing abilities. I don't think the Paladins really did. But things will change from phase to phase, you know? Farewell. In phase one, they focused on making the Pally better at dealing damage. In phase two, maybe they'll focus on making the Pally a better healer. It'd be nice for Paladin healers if they get the Cone heal, like the AoE Cone that I think came in like, it came either in Wrath or Cataclysm. The AoE Cone Heal would be a nice addition to Paladin Healing. All right, so let's, let's go out to the east. Mars and how old am I? I'm gonna be 40 years old like next week. Pretty sure my birthday is coming up. And I will be 40. They gave him Beacon of Light. Yeah, Beacon of Light is nice. But it's not an AoE heal. It's a little bit of like, it's a little bit of cleave heal. Having a solid AoE heal would be nice. Especially because Priest got Circle of Healing. Happy early birthday. I appreciate that, Lithium. Thank you. Now what? Yeah, my, my birthday's on the 22nd. Which is Monday. If it's Monday, then I'll be streaming. So I'll, I'll, I should be streaming for my birthday. I, I don't really have any other plans for it. I, I don't really like to celebrate my birthday or do, like, anything. I like to have it be another day that passes. Alright, while we are fighting relatively harmless enemies, and we're not really in any big threat, I am going to turn my camera off and I'm going to eat some of this food my wife brought me. I will put a comment up.
And I'm gonna keep playing, so I'll keep fighting stuff and I'll try to be safe, but I am hungry and the soup is about ready to eat. So I will see you guys on the flip side.
All right, we're back. It turns out it's hard to eat avocados with your fingers. They're kind of like, they're kind of mushy. I don't know, maybe I need like a fork. <laughs> a little bit messier than I might prefer. D, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Sorry for the late reply. I was eating soup, avocados, crackers, and bread. Put it on the toast. Yeah, I, yeah. I'd have to get it onto the toast still, though. It was just like I, I, you know, avocados are really good. It was a bunch of slices of avocado that the yeah, I could have put on the on the toast and ate like a little sandwich. But I, uh, I still would have to pick up the avocados, and they're kind of resistant to be to being picked up once they're sliced. So I, I just, I just kind of shoveled them into my mouth off the plate. You know, because that's how I eat. I eat like an animal when no one's watching. So I just kind of push them off the plate into my mouth one at a time. There's still there's still one that I couldn't quite get to. Somehow I didn't end up with any of them like in my lap. Which I'm surprised about. Yeah, you guys can go ahead and talk about food now that I'm full. Have at it. My appetite has been sated. I feel like I should have a quest for Moonwell water. Oh, you know what? We probably don't have that quest unless we start that chain back in this area. We'd have to go to Shadow Glen, I think, to pick up that. Uh, maybe we should grab the breadcrumb. It would be worth a little bit of experience. Exactly, Alex. Now anyone who has not already eaten is going to be hungry. Yeah. Everyone's going to have to go eat. Oh, I have a lot of eggs. When we're back in town, we need to buy some mild spices. <clears throat> and we should cook all these before they go green. What brings you here? 
Lucas, good afternoon, man. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, good afternoon. Happy Thursday to you as well. Thanks for being here. Watch over uh, we need a trade goods vendor. Trade goods. Maybe over by the cooking people. Maybe we can get cooking supplies. There we go. That'll work. And we need mild spices. 18 of them. Feel free to browse. Now, if only I could remember to actually, like, keep my food buff going, that would be awesome. I have all this buff food now.
Darren, good afternoon, good evening to you. Welcome to the stream, man. Thanks for stopping by. All right, we've got all the fell cones we need. Let's let's go give these directly to Zen. Uh, what is this? Oh, this is the breadcrumb over to Denelon. Okay, we're not going to go down there quite yet. I want to do some of the Starbreeze Village stuff first. It's always really sad when you see like super low level characters dead. I mean, it's sad to see anybody dead, but... What killed this guy? Maybe just a, a pack of jaguars. He went AFK. Yeah, possibly. He should have went AFK on the road if that was the case. God, the lighting is so different here than the lighting in like any other zone. You don't really notice unless you like come directly here from questing somewhere else. But all of the lighting is so drastically different. You again? Ah. We still need a bunch of spider legs for this cooking quest. Yeah, it could have been a DC. There were a lot of cats around though too. He, he might have aggroed one too many cat, depending on what, what class he was. He may or may not have been able to handle three cats at once. Especially if he was a druid, and a, and a lot of night elves are druids. Druids don't start off like very strong as far as being able to handle ads. It's really great to be able to just to tear through these guys. This is why like RPGs with level scaling will never be as good as RPGs without level scaling. It's nice to be able to put in some extra effort, whether it's extra grinding or extra traveling and be able to be more powerful than the enemies around you.
Uh, we're definitely gonna kill this rare. Maybe we want to fight him. Ah, uh, he's level 7. That's probably fine. I'm sure we can handle one ad. He dropped Gnarl Pine Leggings. Yeah, that's true, Daniel. There's something about killing him in two hits that just feels really satisfying. One auto attack and one judgment, and they're basically done for. I thought we needed a named guy. Maybe we don't have that quest yet. Maybe we have to come back for that one. Now, the breadcrumb down here to Denelon, though, that one's level 5. Maybe I should go at least turn that one in and grab the follow-ups before I ding level 11. I don't really want it to go gray. Watch over you. I am honored. Elun light your path. Good luck, friend. All right, these are level six. Level 7. Okay. We can go ahead. We'll stick around here for a minute. We'll do these two. Mendy, good afternoon. Happy Thursday to you as well. Thanks for stopping by.
the weirdest thing is that there's like a little evil face inside of these things. At least I see a face. It could be that thing where like the human brain sees faces like wherever it can. Maybe there's not really meant to be a face in there, but it looks like a face. Yeah, it's like these bigger guys, they start growing as a face. Like, they grow their face first. And then they grow the rest of them. Which is kind of a weird way to, to do it, but... I guess they're plant-based, so... That makes it okay. Yeah, it turns out that uh, the mobs in World of Warcraft are very weird. Yeah, these guys have little faces. Wendigos wiggle their toes constantly. Like, they, ne they never stop wiggling. Hashtag never stop wiggling. If that's how Wendigos do it. The Yeti, Yeti must do the same thing, since they're, they're the same model. Always be wiggling, that's what I say.
balloon be with you. Be careful. The next one. Nice, level 11. We are going to keep going into Divine Strength. Just flat increase to our strength. The add-on that changes the quest text, that's called Immersion. Mm -hmm. It's a good one. It makes it more readable, but it also breaks it up into like chunks of text that are more digestible. As opposed to it being like one big scroll. And the font that they use in the original quest log is like really atrocious. I I'm super surprised that like throughout all of the changes over the years that they never changed the background or the font of the quest box. I can barely read it. It's surprising that even in retail they haven't they haven't moved to like a different format. They probably don't think it's worth the work, since, you know, a lot of people don't read the quests. And I guess if people aren't reading them, then readability is not really a problem. There we go. Greetings, goddess, watch over you. May the stars guide you. Let's try to find the last of our spider legs before we head back to town.
Can I assist you? Farewell. assist you. Till next we meet. Be careful. Alex, welcome back. We are still alive, so we're doing great. Damien, how has Hardcore been? It's been great. It's been really good to have time between the phases of Season of Discovery to get back into Hardcore and really sink my teeth into it. I have been having a great time. Uh, let's go... Let's... Hmm. <laughs> let's go after Melanus. We are level 11. Yes, it's a scary cave, but we should be fine. And after that, we'll go out to the east. What is Season of Discovery? Um, it's a season of classic era with some changes. Mainly the changes come in the form of new abilities for all the classes. Some of the abilities are new, some of the abilities are taken from like different eras of the game. For example, on the Priest we start off with an ability called Penance. And Penance is something that uh, Priest got in Wrath of the Lich King. Uh, but yeah. A few different changes. There's a level 25 raid. They turned Black Fathom Deeps into a level 25 raid. And the important thing about the season is that uh, it's level capped at certain intervals. So right now we're at the level 25 level cap. In three weeks from now, it's going to open up to level 40. And that'll go on for a while. And then we'll get the 40 to 50 level band. And then we'll get the 50 to 60. And yeah, it's new endgame stuff at each level band. So the next raid is going to be Nomergon. They're going to convert Nomergon into the level 40 raid. And Nicola, if there is, we wouldn't know about it. We're all, we're all law-abiding citizens here. <laughs> so if there is, we, we wouldn't know. We wouldn't be able to tell you, even if we did know. <laughs> A 
and my overall thoughts on Season of Discovery, it's, it's been fun so far. I, I would like to see some changes for the next phase. Uh, I'm unfortunately like I I don't find I don't find discovering the runes very much fun, mainly because you just have to look them up on Wowhead. And I would like there to be changes made to the the waylaid supplies. I'd like to be able to hold on to more supplies at a time, or they could add turn in vendors at all of the quest hubs. But yeah, there's a few things that I would like them to change, and I'm hoping that each phase has some unique elements to it. Like, maybe we don't even have waylaid supplies for level 25 to 40. Maybe they can come up with a different mechanic. What I really liked that was warrior specific, I really liked the monster hunting thing. Like, the, the gathering, like, the monster parts and turning them into the monster hunter person. I really wish that had been something for everybody that could have continued a as a way to compel you to go out and fight mobs that you might not otherwise fight for quests uh, by, like, grinding them to get parts to turn into the monster hunter. That would be so much more interesting to me as a way to build a rep than the waylaid supplies. Although obviously the waylaid supplies kind of exist to propel crafting, I guess. Uh, I can get out of here. I don't have to clear the whole cave. We can just leave.
All right, we have friends. Let's deal with the caster first. He could probably deal the most damage to us out of all of these guys. Uh, we might have another caster. We have another caster. Okay, let's deal with him as well. We might pop a potion here. Let's see if we could not do that. That would be better. I think we're good. Just a little spot of bother. No big deal. Five guys total. Not a bad little streak. Maybe six if we count this guy. I can't I can I don't remember if it started with this guy or not. Uh, and with that, that's the last of the mystics we need, actually. Now we just need our buddy here, Ophirocetus. It was their friends. Yeah, no, they weren't my friends. I guess they they had friends, right? We, beca we became close acquaintances for the time that they were left alive. Alright, there we go. Let's head back. Todd, you haven't played in seven years and you're thinking about coming back? Do it. It is a golden age of World of Warcraft. And there are lots of different versions of WoW to play. You can play Classic Era Hardcore. You could play Classic Era Vanilla. You could play Wrath of the Lich King. You could play Season of Discovery. Uh, you could wait a couple months and play Cataclysm. You could play Retail. You got about 16 different ways to play WoW these days. It is If you were ever going to come back to WoW, now is the time. Because now more than ever before, there's going to be a version of WoW that you enjoy if you've ever enjoyed the game. I would be dead if I was at level with them, Alex. Oh yeah, yeah. If I was like level 8 or, or 9 even, I, I probably would have died. And I, with all those casters, three of them being casters, I probably would not have been able to run away. They probably would have been able to lightning bolt. Can you imagine getting hit with three lightning bolts at once at like level 8 or 9? It would have been a slaughter. Would I have been being quite so reckless if I were level 8 or 9? I'd like to think that I wouldn't be. I'd like to think that I, I was obviously playing a little loose there. Uh, because I, I have a slight power advantage. I, I, I want to think that I would be playing a little bit more careful. If I was level 8. But who knows. Either way it would have been bad. Todd, I'm sorry to hear that part, man. I'm real sorry to hear that. As a thing to do that fills time, WoW is good for... for whittling away the hours. I've probably spent thousands of hours in my life playing WoW. It's always a comfortable place to come back to. Ishnuala. Good luck, friend. Uh, maybe we can run down the road and take on the Gnarl Pine Ambushers. Should be able to. How far are they away? Oh, they're not very far. Well, let's go do that one.
Oh, we've got a little roadside battle here. I've only seen them do this a couple of times. Oh, they they're they're already done. There we go. They had some voice lines. And I was told the voice lines were from Warcraft 3. Yeah, Karen, I think it's that place for a lot of people. It's definitely like that for me. It's a it's a place you can go that, you know, for a while you really don't have to worry about anything else. Dustin Kirby, is it worth coming back? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like I was saying, it's kind of a golden age of WoW right now. We have so many different ways to play WoW in so many different eras and versions of the game that exist right now. It's the perfect time to come back. Uh, we're not going to go into the Barrow Den yet. Going to hold off on that one for a while. What class would I recommend as a first-time player, or someone who has come back from a long break? Uh, you know, it's it's hard to say, but I guess as a first-time player, I would recommend maybe even like a paladin, a shaman, something that has a heal. It's always nice to have a heal button. Especially when you're first learning the game, or if you're relearning it after a long time. It, it can avoid, you know, that frustrating moment when you die. And you have to like do the spirit run to get your corpse back, or like in, in hardcore when you die, you're dead, but... Even in a normal version of the game, sometimes dying can be a pretty big inconvenience. So it's cool to have something that has a heal and some other tools. A priest, paladin, shaman. All good choices for somebody who's either new to the game or coming back after a long break. Feel free to uh, let's empty the inventory. Uh, we have so much food already. I have so much food. I'm going to sell the spider kebabs. I don't think I need them. Alright, guys, I do have to stop right here for today. I have a 2 o'clock hard stop that I am now 10 minutes past. Thank you guys very much for hanging out with me. It's been an awesome time. I'm having a lot of fun here in Teldrassil. Uh, this is where we will pick up tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll probably be on a little bit later. My kid has a half day at school, so I'm probably going to come on around like 1.30, 1 o'clock. Somewhere a little bit later in the afternoon than usual. But yeah, hope to see you guys then. Thank you again for the support today. I really do appreciate it. As always, take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other. And we will see you back in Azeroth again very soon. Bye for now.